192.168.13, our Windows computer that it's connected to. Now calling, checking connection. Oh, how dare you! How dare you! You worked a second ago, you bastard! Now, sometimes when I do these You're Not Stupid guides, it's directed more towards the people who are looking it up that just can't seem to figure it out, and it's not its not that hard of a thing to figure out. Um, but other times, it's because I genuinely feel stupid, because I can't figure it out, and I feel I should be able to figure it out. I don't feel this stuff is above me in any way, and yet I feel stupid. I feel like an idiot. Because I just, I can't get it done. Um, when it comes to getting the Amiga online, uh, it's something I've tinkered with on and off. Um, my interest has never been peaked enough to really dive into it. And, and I kind of blame that on some of the videos, honestly. And they didn't pique my interest enough to make me want to continue. And if I did follow their instructions, I didn't get anywhere. I have taken some pride in getting my DOS computer online. Like, it browses the web. I can go to Google. I can go to all these sites. Um, and some sites I can't go to because, well, the thing with getting computer, old computers online these days is it's just it, they can't cope with it. The, the Internet it seems like it just, you know, the switch. It seems like a switch was just pulled one day and all the old computers couldn't go on the internet anymore. <laughs> I have my DOS computer online, in DOS, in DOS. I have it online through Windows 3.1. I have it online through Windows 98, and for the most part, they're not fun. It's just something you can, it's just something you do. It's like, I can do it, haha, -ha, I did it, take that. Um, it's not something you do for fun, really, because it's not fun. It's not fun to go online with these other computers. It can be fun to go online in a certain way, though, through the BBSs, um, the bulletin board systems. And they're still active to this day, and they're fun. It's fun. It, you have a reason, I think, to do this. The problem with all the videos is they say, getting your Amiga online. Amiga! Amiga was many models. And the thing is, with all these videos, they're all, all of them are using at least an Amiga 1200 or, you know, 4000 or higher. A power PC, which is not even an Amiga. It is my opinion that while, although there's a lot of power users that are on those machines, the grand majority, back then and today, of Amiga users are still using this bad boy right here, the Amiga 500. And when you say getting the Amiga online in a video and you're using the 1200, incomplete. It should just say getting the Amiga 1200 online because it's a different beast. It's a different machine. I believe I can honestly say that I can actually put getting the Amiga online because if it can work on this machine, it can work on all the others. But I'm still going to say 500 because I got the Amiga 500 online, beat that. It's kind of a difficult thing to do, getting the Amiga 500 online. And it's not helped at all by the internet, which doesn't give a shit about this machine anymore, it seems. Despite it, this being the main, main machine. Um, the internet doesn't care. I care. I care. I, I can honestly say I'm more of a power user on the Workbench 1.3 than many users are using 3.1 or with power PC hardware above. Whatever techniques these other videos are using, they don't seem to work with this machine. They all require at least Kickstart 2.0 um, and and also some of them are trying to browse the internet, the worldwide web. They're trying to go on Google and stuff. And when you're doing that, you're not going to have a good time because the Amiga just can't cut it. The Amiga cannot browse the web like that anymore. It just it can't do it. It's just the HTML is too advanced these days for the web browsing. You're just you're not going to have a fun time. Um, it'd be nice. I tried. I tried. That was always the route I tried to go with the Amiga 500, but there just there were never any web browsers made. 
for the Amiga 500. And the videos all want to go through this TCP IP stack. It all, it just, they get too complicated. Um, they're all focused on the 1200 hardware and I believe it needs to go simpler. It needs to go simpler because you're not helping. You're not helping me want to get involved. And I believe everybody out there who has a real Amiga, I believe you should be on the bulletin board systems because it's so much damn fun. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. And I'm gonna show you how to do it for free, hopefully, or very cheaply. And this is just to whet your appetite, really. If, if, if you find yourself loving this, there are more permanent solutions. But maybe you can see over here, I have a little cable. Um, this is the cheap solution. Just, this is just to show that you can do it um, cheaply because chances are if you have an Amiga, you have this cord. It's a no modem cable. Chances are if you want to transfer anything from PC to your Amiga, you've got that cable. And if you've got that cable, you can get it online. I'm going to show you how. And I'm going to show you the fun that you can have while you're doing this, which is something else that I've never seen in any videos that want to do this. They just want to do it. They don't They don't usually focus in, on the bolt and bore systems. They usually, on the 1200, they focus on getting yourself browsing the World Wide Web. I'm, I'm here to get this sucker online, connected to other computers, and to have fun. And I'm going to hopefully show you how you can have fun and make you want to try this yourself. So the very first thing you're going to need is an Amiga. I believe it'll work with any Amiga as long as you have at least Kickstart 1.2. So it'll work on the 1000, it'll work on the 500, it'll work on the 600, it'll work on the 2000, it'll work on the 3000, it should even work on the 1200s. So this video right here, all Amigas, all Amigas, this is how you get them online if you wish. You need an Amiga. You're going to need a terminal program for the Amiga. I'm going to use the program ATALK3 for this demonstration because that's the only one I could get working, honestly. I tried five of them. None of them worked. They all had issues. Just These programs require a manual. They're not intuitive. Um, ATALK3 is intuitive, and I can show you how to use it. So I'm going to use ATALK3. Um, you can get something else to work, go ahead. You're going to need a terminal program on the Amiga. I'm going with ATOC 3. You're going to need a null modem cable that is going to connect to your Amiga through the uh, serial port. And on the other end is going to be a PC of some sort. Uh, usually the videos on this will focus on a uh, Raspberry Pi. A small computer where the sole purpose of this computer is to run a single program, pretty much. So it runs Linux and it's going to run an emulator, um, a modem emulator, and on that you're going to connect it, but that costs some money. Not that much money, but it still it costs money, and in order to grab people's interest, I believe that's the wrong way. That is a permanent solution if you find you love this stuff, and I'm probably going to go that route very soon. But in order to figure out if you want to do this, the proper the proper way is through the null modem cable connected to a PC. I'm going to have it on another retro console, a Windows 98 machine. But as long as you have a Windows or Linux, possibly even Apple, um, will run this. I'm not sure, but definitely Windows and Linux. So Windows 98, Windows XP, Windows uh, 7, you know, and so on. Hopefully, we'll run this program. Hopefully, you have a computer with a serial port. If you don't, you can get an adapter for that. That'll, you know, it'll be a serial port, and you'll plug it into a USB or something. You know, that's the way. But we, in this particular setup, we've got the null modem cable connected to the Amiga to my Windows 98 machine keeping it retro here um, and yes so once and on your Windows PC you're gonna need something called TCP sir it's an executable um, command line based program and I'm gonna show you how to use it this is our no modem cable right here connected to the Amiga's serial port no modem cable
into the Amiga serial port. That is step one. Step two on the PC end. Again, the no modem cable. Here we have it via a 9 pin. But I also have a 25 pin if I want. It doesn't, doesn't quite reach the Amiga though on my end. I have to use the 9 pin in order for it to reach. Serial port. No modem cable on the other end to the PC. And that is step two. All right, everyone, we are now on our Windows 98 machine. You will need your PC to be connected to the internet via TCP IP. I can show you that it is by um, going to Opera right here. And you can see it does indeed, um, it, it works a little bit. <laughs> it it, it, it kind of works. It doesn't work perfectly. It will go to certain pages. Yes, uh, it's still useful. I can go to uh, Wikipedia and such. Search for uh, Amiga 500 Wiki and yes, you can see my Windows 98 PC is indeed still to this day. Um, it is uh, online. It's of course not the greatest experience ever, but it does, it works, it works. To this day, Windows 98, it, uh, it still works. But you can tell the PC is definitely online that is the important thing so then we will need a program called TCP sir which I will provide a download link to you in the description and such this is the program it comes with the TCP sir comes with the source files and such which I have I, I don't know what to do with any of that crap but this is the program but in order to run the program you're gonna need to make your own bat file of some sort so use you know use Microsoft Word just use WordPad itself and you're gonna write some stuff which I'm gonna show you in a second put it somewhere this is not actually I'm just showing you the example but here I have it on the desktop you don't need it on the desktop I actually have it somewhere else uh, I have it in my documents and under programs and there it is there here's the permanent place on my computer for it um, so we have the TCP sir program which we can run from a command line but in order to get any use out of it you really you gotta put some commands into it again this is and this is going a little further than most videos which they're not you're not diving into what you actually need to put in the damn thing so in order to run it you need TCP sir that would be the command TCP sir you'll need a dash D and then another space slash DEV device I think slash TTY S0 and then another space S the speed this is for speed I forget what this one is the man there should be a help file or something a readme it does come with a readme file so you know exactly what all of these settings mean but it's not the great even this thing is not the greatest readme file I've ever seen so even this though it says um, the n command there the way it has it I've done it this way and it just it doesn't work the way at least not on Windows 90 it may, perhaps it works on other um, Windows devices but the way it has this command it, it doesn't work so I had I just happened to have, read something from a BBS that got that fixed, and I'll show you. Um, but there is a README file if you want to go into it. But uh, yes, this is the device itself. The speed, I have it at um, 19K, I believe. I believe that's what it is. Is it 19K or is it 9K? I, I forget. <laughs> um, 192, 100 baud. Um, that is what it, I've gotten it to work with. I don't want it to go any further on the Amiga 500 itself because it has uh, serial port issues but I've gotten to work at this speed perhaps 9600 baud would be uh, that's another I had it working at 9600 as well but I got it up to 19200 baud um, slash P is the port it seems to want to default to uh, 6400 or something I don't know for some reason I changed it to 23 23 is also a popular one um, and here after the, this is all you really need um, is this this uh, this is all you need in order to run the program this is um, extra um, 
The problem with the Amiga terminal programs is um, they don't allow you. These days, you're not dialing an actual telephone line. Um, you're dialing, you know, a web address. So in order to uh, work with that, uh, in order for the Amiga to easily work with this, um, we can use this program with the slash n and then quotes. Quotes, I needed quotes. If I didn't have quotes, this did not work. So uh, uh, you do the dash n, quote, and then you make up a phone number. Any phone number you wish. I chose 555 um, dash 001 for particles dot dns dot org um, and then the port was 6400 and then end quote you know a quote at the start and then another quote and then we have another dash n for the next one which is 555-0002 which is FOSTEX okay and again um, again we uh, have that quote at the end we got a space we have another n command you can have as many n commands as you wish I believe again 555-0003 this is just for ease of access on the Amiga side. You don't need to do this, but this makes it easier. So this is that one. I, this, uh, Starfleet Headquarters or something like that. <laughs> I believe that one is. And uh, I got Centronian. That's 0004. And that's all you need. Uh, after that, you simply you can, you can uh, run it directly from the thing. I have a shortcut on the desktop at the moment. Click on that. It will run the um, shell command. I will note, however, on Windows 98, this thing will eventually start um, slightly freezing the machine. Um, you see how my mouse is moving nice and smooth at the moment? It will get to a point where every like five seconds it will hang. It will slightly, it'll freeze there and then it'll start going again. Uh, eventually within a couple hours I noticed that the time is quite a bit off but it still works. It still works um, but I will note, on Windows 98, I, other people don't seem to experience this, but on my machine, on Windows 98, TCP Sir will eventually start to hang the machine ever so slightly, and your clock's gonna, is, is gonna be wrong, so note that. Right now it's fine, it'll be fine for a little while, but it will eventually start to fuck itself up, but it'll still run. The Amiga, on the Amiga end, everything will still be fine, it's just, this the PC you're running it on, if it happens to be Windows 98 anyway, it's going to slightly freeze the machine every few seconds. It's going to just, okay, just note that, note that, and, uh, yeah, okay. We are done on the PC end. It's all taken care of. Let's go to the Amiga. So here we are on the Amiga uh, Workbench 1.3. Uh, it looks like Workbench 2.0, but that is just because of my Magic Workbench type of things. Uh, again, 3.4.5, Workbench version 3.4.20, that is, that is Workbench 1.3 for whatever reason. That's how they named it at the time. Again, you will need a terminal program. I have a talk, a talk 3. And, but before that, we'll need to go to the preferences. We're going to need to change the serial port. We're going to change the settings on the serial port. Just make sure you have these set correctly. We have 19200 baud. Okay, again, I've had it working at 9600, but uh, and anything higher, I believe, will really screw up on the Amiga 500 anyway. Uh, read bits 8, stop bits 1, parity none, write bits 8. I got a 4096 buffer size. Handshaking, it used to be, I used to have it on RTS slash CTS. I believe that is the better um, protocol, but uh, ATOC 3 does not support it, unfortunately. There are terminal programs that support this. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any of them to work. So uh, you will have to change it to on off, and you will have to save it, and you will have to restart the computer in order for it to take effect. Just note of that. Once you have that, you will need a talk three. Um, you can use the disk. It should work again if you just put in the disk. Um, do that thing. Do the serial port settings on the disk itself. But if you want it on the hard drive, I will um, show you a quick tutorial on getting it on your actual hard drive because it does not feature an installation program. And you will notice we have a talk it's on the hard drive already, but pretend this was DF0 um, on your hard drive. You will make a directory of some sort, make a new folder, duplicate an empty folder, you know, and then rename it a talk 
and then you have you know an actual icon for it and everything um, throw everything throw everything from your floppy disk of the ATOC copy everything over to the hard drive folder and then uh, you'll be pretty much set except fonts yeah you'll have a fonts directory go you also want to go to uh, your hard drive DH0 you will want to find the fonts directory of your hard drive and again you will copy all of these you'll hit copy and you'll you'll put them all over to your actual font directory of workbench that way the program looks correct and that's all you need to do there you'll need to do one other thing though that is open up a word processor of your choice we're going to use excellence here using excellence we will open the s directory or in your hard drive it's df0 um, slash s change the pattern to a question mark there and we will go to the startup sequence we need the startup sequence open up the startup sequence and here we will need to write an assign for a talk three there it is here assign a t three okay this is how uh, I these are these this is how I noticed that the programs themselves did it so this is how I always copy it I uh, put a little separator there and there's a space just in the, the, for whatever reason there seems to be a space there so space and then assign a t three a t three it is what the disk label will be if you have the floppy disk inserted the a t three colon another space dh0 another colon and then wherever the heck you put it i put it right there a talk and a talk and a slash save that restart the computer and take out the floppy drive it should be now it should now be installed on your hard drive and it should work if you don't if you don't do that uh, a talk will not work on the hard drive so here it is I've changed the icon to make it look nicer with the uh, magic workbench you know type features there let's launch a talk 3 here is a talk 3 this is not the default however I will show you some defaults I images this has been heavily modified um, I've changed the um, colors and such. This is not how it looks. It has a very um, DOS EGA color palette by default. I have changed the colors to make it more pleasing to me and the websites I have uh, gone through. But uh, just so you can see, it has eight colors. Um, it lets you use eight colors. Uh, here are my color selections just in case you wanted to use those I happen to like this but maybe it, I, I think there might be some tweaking on my end too but originally it was a very um, ugly EGA kind of color palette it will also default you into um, a workbench screen again without it, it changed it right now to the gray color but uh, using the floppy disk it'll have it via the EGA color I don't like I mean, you can resize this if you want, and you know you can work within Workbench a little bit while you're on it, and that's kind of that might be useful. But I noticed it cuts out a lot of information on the left and right because of that. It cuts out text, and therefore I don't happen to like using it that way. So I use the full. And again, even with full, you can still go back and use your Workbench things and such like that. You can have a lot of things running. What I love about this program is, you know, what I love about the Amiga and its multitasking is you can have multiple things running. It seems to run just fine with other tools like if you want to save. If you're on the bulletin board and you want to save a screenshot, I use the tool Picked Saver. And uh, once that has been loaded, you press Control Alt Help. And then you can uh, type in something. We're going to go. Um, uh, YouTube BBS right click we're gonna go auto numbering that way we can uh, make some screenshots anytime we want we could even have some music playing in the background while we do all of this uh, stuff there we go we got the music playing <laughs> we can do all of this while it's running it's it's a wonderful thing I I happen to love it <laughs> We're going to need some settings on ATOC 3 itself. And uh, what we will want is 
the change. We're going to need the settings the baud right. We're going to have it match what we have on the serial port setting. So in my case, it's 19,200 baud right there. Uh, parity none. Stop bits one. No bits. Number of bits uh, eight. Handshake. X on. X off. Duplex full. And every time you do that, make sure to save it just so it loads up again in that proper way. Uh, uh, there are other features like the phone book. The phone book is a handy, handy feature, but we don't need that. Um, I'm going to show you how to use that a little later on. But for now, I'm going to just pause this so I can think a little more. The terminal emulator. Um, ANSI is the one that seems to work best for me. I don't even know what these other ones do at the moment. Um, but ANSI is um, the one that it's, it's both graphical and text-based and such. So ANSI seems to work with most of the ones I have used. Um, I have not messed with most of these other settings, but uh, they are there. I will show you how to use some of these, though. This is it's a very intuitive program, much more intuitive than all the other terminal programs I have tried. But again, make sure those settings are correct. Make sure they match. Make sure you have those cables, and make sure you have the program TCP Sir running on the PC. And then you can go to phone, and you can go to dial. And this is where you enter the telephone number, which of course, we no longer have telephone numbers, do we? Um, this is where you enter the board address, and I believe the other programs, again, they wouldn't let me... Most of the other programs I tried wouldn't even let you attempt this, the enter the telephone number using the modern settings, which is unfortunate, but this one made in 1986, apparently, this one does it. So, I have memorized Particles BBS, so I will show you Particles BBS, because I... I before I figured out the phone book... Um, I had it memorized because I was using it so much. I love particles so far. This is my favorite one. So I go to particles. BBS dot DIN DNS dot ORG colon 6400. Okay. Press escape to cancel the call. Now calling. Checking connection. Call completed. Particles BBS. Connecting. Yes. Hit return. We are we are online, everybody. We are online. Do you support Commodore Color slash graphics? They're referring to the Commodore 64, I believe, and I do not believe the Amiga supports that, so I will say no. But we do support ANSI, so I will say yes. And here we go. It's loading it up. There we go. We got some nice um, um, uh, pixel art there. Very, 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 very pixel art. <laughs> Uh, particles BBS since 1992 everybody website www.particles.org and they've got a Facebook page to facebook.com slash particles BBS supporting all retro machines and more pause press enter then you will enter your membership handle um, some of these have a very awesome very awesome log on thing which I will show you some of those and of course what, what would it be other than SHOT97, everybody? Of course it is. And you can enter your password. It only supports a certain amount of characters. So keep it simple. Uh, checking password. And uh, it'll say what the last person said. Intric8 says, Ugly Sweater Week starts now! <laughs> Intric8 is uh, my friend over on Amiga Love Form. Uh, identifies Chris. We are number 13,213. It has also from the uh, CSDB.DK. That is a, um, a uh, very famous Commodore 64 um, site which features all kinds of... If you want, if you want uh, your NTSC Commodore 64 um, to play PAL games and such, you, you will want to visit that website because it has just so many disk images. <laughs> It'll check my mail. Um, this is an old mail, I believe. We can open. I believe. I, I hope. I hope Intricate doesn't mind me showing this to all of you. But uh, it's just a little message that he says. Uh, it takes ten times to load on the Commodore 64. He has his connected via the Commodore 64. He hasn't figured out quite yet how to get the Amiga um, running on these BBSs. Hope this helps, Intricate. 
and uh, yeah, I just, I'm holding it for now, uh, until he sends me something else, and I'll probably kill it later, kill it just means delete, it'll hold the mail, we can check out the wall, the graffiti wall, love you all, respect, yeah, um, I don't know how, I don't remember typing this, but it says shot97 says nds.org, um, colon 60. That is the the end half of their actual address. I don't know. I must have accidentally typed that in. I don't know how. I don't know how. But then I, I, re I made up for it. I'm just making up for that new message earlier. <laughs> Want to print a message? No. Musings by dead comedians. I'm against picketing, but I don't know how to show it. Again, and we'll see this particles, the exclamation point there. If you use a talk three via the workbench screen, it'll cut off the exclamation point, and I think even part of the S too. It'll just cut all that off. So I use, I use it in full screen. We have a certain amount. Again, we are basically dialing up another computer to this day, even though it's using the World Wide Web. Um, it, we are essentially dialing up another computer so I believe on particles we are the only ones online at the moment we can only be there can only be one caller at a time on this particular some of them you can have a couple more but on particles it's just us at the moment so just to keep that in mind we can configure our account again it'll just you know some options for you we don't really need to mess with any of that at the moment what well, we are here, though, for the crux of everything, the fun of everything, we're going to show the social networking aspect of it. This is what is fun. This is what makes this worth coming to every single day, um, much more so than having Windows 98 or DOS via web browser. You're not going to use that every day because it's a pain in your ass. It's just not fun fun um, this is fun so we press R to read messages and as long as you've been on them we can select a certain message board we can select them all we'll just go to one for now the general hangout area entering the general hangout message board there are six new messages and it'll depending on the last time you visited it'll know how many new messages there are let's read the new messages checking in from Skip, um, this is one in regards to one of mine, I believe. But this is somebody else. This is I. I made a post called "New Member Shot 97," but again, it'll not only will they respond to you, but you know, they'll respond to other people too. I don't understand the terminal program would know the difference between busy and no answer. You can check it out yourself. Call my BBS from one device and log in, then call it from a second device. Again, this is, you know, they're having their own conversations, too, so um, that one doesn't concern us, though, but we'll go to the next one. Um, this is a quote from me, though, quoting Shot97, everything I everything I try it on, I'm talking about um, uh, my ATOC3 program, uh, the exception being Centronian, I think, I believe I tried VT100 and VT50 and got a little further, but it kept kicking me off. I think Centronian forces all call all colors into a uh, uh, Commodore graphics mode. Nothing word, nothing wrong with being an introvert, but it can be an impediment in some cases. Could come in handy if we're ever stranded on Mars. Again, this is this is uh, this is the social networking aspect of it. It's just it's just fun, everybody. It's nice and fun. And they have lots of different categories there. Nothing new, unfortunately, at the moment. But you can always go in and you can read some of these categories. They even got vinyl. These people love vinyl. I love vinyl. I should actually, you know, delve into that a little deeper and see what the heck these people are saying about vinyl. I love vinyl. And we will get different categories. Like, isn't this just so nice? And with the colors I've chosen, it just, it looks very nice. EGA does not look so nice, everybody. Just keep that in mind. You'll probably want to change these colors. Uh, to better suit um, what you like. Um, classic cars. Let's go to classic cars. I have a classic car. Maybe we can write something. We have 5,927 messages, though. So where do you want to start? Um, let's post something, though. We can press P to post a message. We can go to General Hangout. 
And we will go to the classic cars if we can find it. There, K. We'll we will make our own port. Start a new thread. What shall I call this new thread? Be general. Uh, 1987 Honda CRX. If around 186 lines available, enter a question mark for help. Again, we can we can say question, and it'll give us you know some some different uh, you know signs that we have. We can um, we can auto sign our handle, <laughs> delete previous line. We can you know we can mess with everything. So just this so you know. So let's start our message, everybody. This is what I came up with, everybody. Uh, Notice the car. Cla Notice the classic car thread. So I thought I might tell a little bit about my little beauty. The classic car her name is Shy. Must take after her dad. She's a 1987 Honda Civic CRX. Always keep in mind the car companies add a year to sound newer. She would actually be from 1986, only a year older than myself. It is a two door slash three door with hatch, and I've kept her all original. The CRXs are prone to being riced out, and I'm happily all stock. It's a 1.5 liter four cylinder engine with only 57 horsepower, but an amazing for Honda 80 foot pounds of torque at only 25,000 RPMs. Honda had a habit of reaching top torque at much higher RPMs. It has a high fuel submodel of the CRX. And the best I ever got was 57 miles per gallon on the highway and about 45 in city drive. And she barely clocks in at a ton, so she's quite fast. But being the high fuel model, the gear ratios have that in mind. For me, it's about keeping her going, getting that awesome miles per gallon. And having it look good. I rebuilt it with the help. I rebuilt it with the help of a friend about five years ago, and she looks damn good. And one of the very few good-looking non-sports cars of the entire decade of 1980s. I plan on keeping her forever. She's my age. If she dies, I might not be far off. <laughs> Let's keep her alive. Uh, that's all for now. And when we're done with that, there are commands. You can press the. Uh, you know, again, you can press the uh, question mark to do that. But uh, to send that out, we go slash s. And uh, it will save it and post it for us. There it is. Oh, it's the classic car thread. So there it is. There is my, uh, the one I just wrote today. And uh, there it is for everybody to look at. And hopefully they'll reply and uh, like my, uh, my, my beautiful, beautiful shy 1987 Honda CRX. This is this is the social networking aspect of it, which is better than Facebook. I have to say, I'm more involved with these people, and I've only been here for a few days. I'm more involved with these people than I am of anybody on Facebook. I'm telling you right now, these people share very similar interests. They are better friends than your real friends, most likely. They're a lot of fun, and it's not the only thing you can do, though. Uh, what else do we want to do here? We can. There I am. I'm the last member, so somebody, somebody join. I don't, I don't want to be the noob. Yeah, I gotta make fun of somebody else. Come on, guys. <laughs> Let's quick to the main menu. Runs nice and fast on our Amiga at the baud rate we have it on. Um, there's lots of other things we can do, though. We can play games. Let's play a game, shall we? Shall we play a game? And by the way, Atalk 3 does support voice. Um, it's not, it's not quite what you're thinking with the war games. Not quite. Um, I believe that computer in the, uh, I believe the computer in the movie had a special um, routine, special language for um, using that speaker. So the Amiga does not quite have that language. So it's not quite the. Oh, I should have. Uh, I pressed the wrong button, guys. I pressed the wrong goddamn button. Let's, we can play a card game. We can play, you know, we got all these kind of games. Let's just play a card game for now. I wonder if it's got Yahtzee. I love, ooh, Go Fish. Look at all these games, guys. We do have Yahtzee. We do have Yahtzee. Let's play some Yahtzee. Yahtzee might be a little too involved, though, for this video. Oh, God. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just love the way they come up with, you know, presenting this stuff. <laughs> so that's our scorecard, everybody. Do you want instructions? I, I kind of know how to play Yahtzee. You can play for fun or the championship. Five credits. We're just going to play for fun for now. Oh, my God. Look at that. This is the coolest thing ever! 
All right, so I'm about to finish this game, I believe. Not too good of a score, but, you know, that's all right. For our first time, it's not too bad. Play again. Okay, got a grand total of 135. Not the greatest game ever, but that's okay. You scored 135 points in one game for an average of 135 points. Game. We can browse their file menus. This is what most people went back in the day. Most people went to the bulletin boards to get some files for use. Um, we can go to transfer file menu. We can upload files. We can download certain files. Um, get flag and download. So we press G, I believe. We want to flag something to download. What do we want to do? We got Commodore uploads. We got Commodore 64 games. We got 128 files. So what else do we have here? We got Vic 20 files. Uh, music files. Go to the music files. It's something that we could play. I believe we should be able to play some music files. I believe my uh, thing supports uh, Sid music. Well, we got mod music as well. Let's go into the mod music. Uh, let's just go to category E. Why not? There's a lot of mod files. More mod than more mod than Sid, apparently. Again, this is you look at it and you're not gonna know what the hell they don't have descriptions and such, so you're not gonna know what the hell you're looking at. Big Honda, that sounds nice though. Let's try the big Honda, number one. Number one looks good. We'll do big Honda. Enter file names, numbers, separate with company. We're just gonna do number one. Finished. Download flagged files. BigHonda.mod. Protocol. So this is, again, so now we have a protocol. We have a decision to make. Uh, why Wotum Batch? So that's the protocol it wants us to use, apparently. And this one does support a wide variety of protocols. So it wants the Y Modem Batch. There it is. Y Modem Batch. We'll select Y Modem Batch. We can also select a new protocol to give it whatever it, you know, whatever you happen to have available. So we'll just press continue though. Uh, estimated uh, point 0.2 minutes, so hopefully it'll be fast for us. Would you like to be auto logged off? No. Select receive mode on your terminal. We will hit receive. And right now, as we speak, it should start. Yes, it is. Bytes transferred. There you go, guys. <laughs> we are now downloading. We are downloading from the internet on the, to the Amiga 500. The Amiga 500. The computer everybody has. The computer everybody uses. This is the one. This is this so much fun, everybody. Even though, it, it could, in reality, it'll probably take you one second to download this file from the actual internet uh, using your modern computer. Even though it said 0.2 minutes, it's probably going to take us a little bit of time to transfer this. Although it says file size 26112, and we've already, yeah, there it is. X, Y, Z modem received. Successful. Yeah. Download complete. Press enter. But how about we find that file, everybody? Let's, let's see. We can, we can go into this. Let's load up Hippo Player. Um, or, or not. We can play it from here, too, if we can find it. I believe it'll just dump it right into our uh, workbench directory, if I remember correctly. What was it called again? I don't remember. It's a mod, though, so it should be in here somewhere. Let's try to find it. BigHonda.mod. Let's do that. Let's uh, play the mod if we can. It should be a uh, play module. There it is, everybody. We just downloaded that. Big Honda. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, that's our downloaded category. Let's get out of there. Let's go to the main menu. Uh oh. Looks like we had some. <laughs> looks like we had a little issue there. Line error. Uh oh. That might be his disk drive. I don't know. <laughs> It looks like uh, Particles might be going through some issue right now. Let's get out of here, though. Let's show you some other stuff. Let's log off of Particles. We will log off. Enter text to new caller. We'll just keep it the old one. This is it's definitely having some issues right now, it looks like. <laughs> Has some recommendations, though. And there it is. No carrier. We are done.
We're done with particles. So if you're using a talk 3, you're probably going to want to save some numbers so you don't have to type in those long, horrible addresses, right? It has a phone book feature. And most of the phone book features I found in other programs, and this program too, they're not intuitive. <laughs> they're not intuitive. For example, I would go here and I would type in a name such as particles. I was just putting particles too for there. And again, you can't type in the full address. So the full address is particles bbs dot din d n. You see, it just stops. It's expecting a real phone number. Um, the actual address is just too damn long. So you have to use TCP, sir. You'll have to use that setting to make a phone number for yourself. And again, but which is um, five five five. Um, 0001 for particles but I didn't know what to do at that point and I press save and it wouldn't do anything I press dial it wouldn't do anything like it it's it doesn't know it's there like um, you see it's, it's just it's not there it's not actually putting it there I, I had a lot of problems so what you actually do you go to system name particles 2 you type in the phone number 555-0001 and what you do is you press edit and then it puts it in there but you also you'll want to go to quick and you'll want to set this up um, each number like uh, make sure it's at 9200 make sure this stuff matches because this stuff and, and make sure the screen um, it kept setting me back to workbench screen but yeah make sure that's at full again you know set those things up right um, edit them in and then save it then you save it at that point here you'll, you will notice it says call timed out now it might have been on their end but it also might have been on our end um, this thing's not always great with that stuff so um, what you'll want to do actually is either put it in your phone book there's a good chance good we're gonna put something in the phone book now actually um, uh, test test our IP which, and we're actually going to put our IP address on there for that computer, whatever uh, computer you have it connected to, which in our case is 192.168.13. Edit that in. This should already be set correctly, I believe. Yes, it is. We will say dial 192.168.13. It should immediately, once it starts calling, no. See? It says checking connection. It should immediately come back to a return. It should say, well, uh, we it's busy. The line is busy because our computer is currently emulating a modem there. But it's not. So it's on our end. Let's try it again. Now calling. Checking connection. Call completed. Busy. There we go. And we got it. <laughs> a neat feature, but it's not really a feature you're going to be using too much. And that's the voice. Yes, we can now use... Now I am speaking. Now I am speaking. We have the Amiga's voice synthesizer, so you can be you can be all war games on this sucker and uh, try it out. 192.168.1.3 Press escape to cancel the call. Now calling. Checking connection. Call completed. Busy. So there you go. That, that's an example of it working. It actually... From every actual site I've tried it on, it's, uh, oh, that's probably why it didn't work. I just didn't press enter so it could do that no carrier thing, and it probably works now. But any site I've actually tried this on has been, oh, it's been an awful experience because every time you, if you get like a, if you have graphics on there, like those particles graphics, it'll, it'll try to describe them via text. And it'll just it'll go nuts. I will I'll give you an example. It's pretty damn terrible though. I will let's call back into particles. Let's try Fos Fostex actually. Let's call into Fostex using the voice. Oh, it didn't actually use the voice there. Okay, I know why. It's because I didn't have it set up saved. I didn't have it saved that way. <laughs> I think we can still start it right now though, I believe. <clears throat> Yeah, let's turn it on right now. Now I am speaking. So we'll try it. Shot 97. Shot 97. CW colon password colon star 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 star. 
You hear it? You hear it? Last two callers calling. <clears throat> two three six three two nine nine point Stroudsburg comma plus zero three four. I love it. I love it. Two three six. I love it. It's so great. Call zero four call and zero eight seven eight one. Auto message by call and call. Auto message. Zero nine two zero one six zero three call and four seven p.m. The Triumph Holiday Music Week on Retro Backless Station Bang. Retro Battle Station Bang! D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D Greater than what are you using for your terminal question mark? Spectrum or something else question mark? That would be good. I am using the basic. I would like to use the voice occasionally, occasionally just to like maybe <laughs> have it read the messages. That would be cool. But I don't think it's practical. I don't know if it's practical, everybody. I want to show you an example of uh, what some of these things do when you sign up, though. Here we are. Signing up for, I think this is probably level 29, I'm not sure exactly, but... Uh, ah, a new recruit! Centaurian's eyes twinkle, no doubt thinking of his recruitment bonus. The old emperor is always in need of good warriors. He confines in a friendly tone. He leads you to a small building right inside the great gate. He seems pleased so far. What village do you hail from, young gun? <laughs> uh, this is it's just an uh, example of... Some of these things, I advise you to save some of this because you'll probably not, you'll probably won't be able to get to see it ever again. I really like how some of these go all out, and I've actually saved one for you guys. Um, I just, I dialed up, up this one, and I, I knew instantly it was going to be cool, so I saved it for you guys. Um, I believe it's this Atari Star Trek one. Let's load it up and see what we get. Starfleet HQ welcomes you, Fidonet. Please press your escape key to energize. Running on a real Atari TT-030. Glad to be back in <laughs> the 21st century. Starfleet he headquarters. A alias or act number new for new user. We are a new user. Select terminal translation. Standard ASCII, we have a V2-52 uh, color. Which is the Commodore, I believe. I, do I have V V T? I do have V T fifty two. So, but or we have ANSI. Well, we have ANSI. ANSI would be the best uh, selection, though. New users application. Welcome to Start Fleet HQ. Please take the time to complete the user application, and you will be validated by Commodore Clifford ASAP. Desired alias shot ninety seven. Real name, no handles, please. I'm not going to show you my real name, but uh, let's just put Chris, hopefully. <laughs> Country, USA for United States. Yes, that is indeed correct. I am in the United States. Oh, good. It's just like all the other boards. Slash S saved it. Thank you for signing up. Stand by. Starfleet HQ. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's the Enterprise! It's the Enterprise! <laughs> Isn't that just the greatest thing you've ever fucking seen in your entire fucking life? But yeah, it's uh, ATOC 3. Um, yeah, you follow the methods I showed you, you should be able to get it online. Let's, uh, hope you guys had fun with this. Let's do the little outro, though, guys. I'm, I'm really, really geeked to see uh, some more people with the actual Amiga, the Amiga 500, um, the Amiga 2000, the original Amigas, okay? The OCS, the ECS chipsets. Those are the ones I want to see. Uh, I, I want to see more about this stuff because this is the stuff that impresses me. Uh, AGA was far too little, far too late, and I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. Uh, 
Um, not that I wouldn't, not that I wouldn't use it if I had one, but it doesn't impress me. This stuff is genuinely awesome to get stuff running on because it's impressive. Okay. Uh, when people make demos, do they make demos for the Commodore 64 with expansions, with added memory? No. You could add memory to the Commodore 64. Nobody does it. Neither do they make anything for the Commodore 128, you know? They don't do that. Unfortunately, though, with the Amiga, everybody just makes stuff with AGA in mind, even though nobody made stuff with AGA in mind back in the day. And that's sad. You know, it's sad that nobody took advantage of it back in the day. But likewise, it is just as sad that nobody is taking advantage of this sucker. They haven't begun. You haven't begun to touch the surface with this sucker and its capabilities. Look, did you see my workbench, guys? Looks better than most of yours with AGA, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. And I'm doing a separate video on being a power user with Workbench 1.3 because it's possible and you can do it. And it's fun. It's so much fun. Uh, you can do it. You can get online with this machine. It's They don't make it easy for you. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that my guide will help you guys get online because I'm telling you, I had to do it all myself. Nobody helped me along the way. <laughs> Nobody helped me. I had to do it all myself. Per usual, I will be doing a written supplement to this. A written guide to getting your Amiga online, your Amiga 500, and therefore pretty much all Amigas online. I can do it, guys. Uh, everyone else needs to start putting asterisks on their videos saying get in the 1200 online because that's not the Amiga. Um, this is the Amiga. They're all Amigas, but uh, if you're getting it online via 1200, uh, it's not it's not quite true. Because uh, I'm telling you, you, you follow the steps you used for your 1200, it ain't gonna work on this machine. This is to get you all started, everybody. I hope you, I hope this will feed you because you can do it. You got a no modem cable? Chances are you do if you have an Amiga because you'll want to get those disk images from your PC to the Amiga. So you got a no modem cable, I'm betting. You don't, it's pretty cheap, but uh, get that no modem cable out, follow those instructions, try it out for yourself, see if you enjoy it. I think you will. I think you'll get a hell of a lot of enjoyment out of it. Uh, more enjoyment. I find more enjoyment out of it than Facebook, more enjoyment out of it than Twitter. The only thing that rivals it in terms of social networking is the place, is the place that no longer considers itself a social networking site, YouTube. Go to the Amiga Love website, uh, follow, follow the links in the description. Uh, to read the written article. Um, maybe I'll do a tweet from the Amiga itself. I'm on Twitter now, everybody. We all know YouTube doesn't give a shit about you. doesn't give a shit about me. So, if you want to make sure you actually see the videos, uh, then go to Twitter, uh, at Shot97Retro. That is my uh, Twitter handle. This is the You're Not Stupid Guide. Check out some playlists for some other You're Not Stupid Guys. I don't do them too often. But they're always fun, and I hope you all enjoy them. Check out my last video on Uninvited! Did you guys happen to notice this little Easter egg behind me? This is my congratulations printed from my Uninvited review. Uh, I actually printed it out. Congratulations! By defeating the evil entities that had taken possession of both ma this mansion and your little brother, you, Mr. Shot97, have proven yourself master of the house of Abraxas, the Amiga Adventure. Team!